Welcome back, I'm here with Dr. Claire, my dermatologist, and today is gonna to be a great video. This is the three most important skincare products that you need and the three biggest misconceptions about each of them. So first, Dr. Claire, what are the three most important skincare Top products? Top picks, sunscreen, vitamin C, and retinoid. So let's start with SPF, your sunscreen. The number one most common comment that I get all across social media about sunscreen is that sunscreen causes Cancer. It's so interesting. I don't know where this misinformation came from. I think that there are some chemical sunscreens that's been pulled from the market because they're potentially carcinogenic, meaning cancer promoting, if used all over the body and absorption mm -hmm. and repeatedly used. That's why a lot of times I stick to mineral sunscreen, but then you have the whole controversy of nano particles, which is yeah. meaning that you can right. get these tiny particles of mineral sunscreen, mm -hmm. zinc, particularly into your bloodstream. I think the truth is that there is no dermatologist out there that's going to tell you that the, the benefits don't outweigh the risks of using sunscreen. Yeah. And I'm a huge proponent of sun protective clothing. As yes. Jillian knows, we I it. tell all my patients, especially as a busy working mom and I'm outside a lot, I need to invest in some really oh. nice lightweight button downs, rash guards, skirts that are pants, like light mm -hmm. pants that maybe they're not UPS and UPF infused and 100% protective. So you do have to be careful, but they're still better than nothing. And they're better than sunscreen. And the reality is people don't reapply sunscreen in the quantity yes. or frequency necessary. Totally. The second thing that I get told about sunscreen, second misconception is that chemical sunscreen is not safe. This is really going to be difficult to tell people to use mineral sunscreen all right. the time. I love it. It is white. It's messy. It ruins your car. It ruins your house. <gasps> right. So I think the reality is what we always say, the sunscreen is best, the one that you're going to use. And people are just more likely to be compliant with the chemical sunscreens. Right. And not all of them are unsafe. Very few have been picked up. But also you have to put on so, so much. much of that right. chemical all over your body. Right. For the absorbs it's all about the absorption, the absorption and the body surface area. You, this is a zero concern if you're applying only to your face and neck a product or yes. applying to the back of your hands. Don't worry about it. If you're talking about you're covering your child or yourself head to toe in a sunscreen, I do think it's wise to be a little bit prudent in what you're picking. Mm -hmm. However, the reality is that the government has been very careful. The FDA shuts down when they find that there's an ingredient that they're suspicious about. So you can relax. If something's on the market here, I think you can be comfortable that it's been screened for. Yes. The third misconception with SPF is that you need vitamin D. It is not good to constantly be wearing sunscreen. You sometimes need to be in the sun without sun protection. That's not true. Again, like we said, no one uses the quantity of sunscreen, nor the nor do they reapply with the frequency required. So you're naturally going to get vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That being said, our country is very vitamin D deficient, it seems. And it is better to get vitamin D as a resource from your foods rather other yes. than from a capsule, but if you need supplementation, your doctor can talk to you about that. Yeah. And going out in the sun and risking getting sunburns or getting a lot of tan and increasing your risk of skin cancer is not the way to combat not having enough vitamin D. So that's totally. really not true. Second product and its misconceptions, we're gonna talk about vitamin C serum. Number one misconception is that all vitamin C is unstable. It oxidizes and a lot of comments that I get say, don't use vitamin C, use hyaluronic acid. These are not interchangeable. Vitamin C is an antioxidant and it is a finicky ingredient and you do need to have good clinical data to believe in the product. Hyaluronic acid is simply a moisturizer. I've repeated this a lot of times in these videos, but it's because I do like hyaluronic acid, but it's not anti-aging and right. it's not anti-oxidizing. It's none of these properties. It's simply a moisturizer. Yeah. I personally use SkinCeutical CE Throlic. Dr. Claire also loves it, but people always say that that is one of the worst one to use because it is in a dropper. It's difficult to use a dropper. It definitely oxidizes and it smells a little funky sometimes, but the reason that we like it is again, data, data, data. We like to see that it yes. works. We like to see that it's getting in the right pH and the right environment to optimize what it can do for you. And it's really just an old technology, old product that is tried and true. There are other newer products coming yeah. out that we get excited about when we see the data, but yeah. you gotta look at the information and who they studied yes. and what they studied. I think the data is more important than how the product's housed. Yeah, right. definitely. You can have something in a 
airless pump that has never, no data, that yeah. we're not sure what's inside of it. At least with something like the SkinCeuticals, there's so much third-party clinical data that we're, we know that it's getting to where it needs to go. Yeah, some of these skincare products actually have legitimate studies in medical journals. Yeah. So yes, they're funded most of the time by the brand, right? but there's reputable doctors that are overseeing yeah. these trials, and there is data, again. Yeah. Money. We, we kind of covered this third misconception about vitamin C, but we're gonna pound it into you again. Hyaluronic acid is more important for the skin than vitamin C. I don't know why people are saying that. I see a lot of estheticians posting about that, that hyaluronic acid is one of the most important things you can do. Forget your vitamin C because it's unstable. Hyaluronic acid is just a moisturizer. Well, maybe it's Unless because, it's a filler. Yes. Unless it's going into your skin. Maybe it's because it's those products sometimes make your skin look immediately better. And so people- Right, that could be it. Right, like you associate hyaluronic acid, you put it on, you have a glow. Oh, I'm glowy or I'm right. dewy. Exactly, yeah. which, which is also important if you wanna look good day to day. But yeah. we're just talking simply about prevention. Yes. We're talking about things that are going to help your skin mm -hmm. as you get older, not yeah. just something in the day-to-day -day appearance right. of your skin. And to wrap it up, retinoid. Lots of misconceptions about retinoids. Here's the top three that I get asked all the time or I get told all the time. First is that retinoid thins the skin, so it is not safe for long-term use because of this. Dr. Claire. It does not thin the skin. What it does is it increases the rate at which your cells turn over. The skin has various layers, and what's happening with a retinoid is it's expediting this movement from the basal layer to the stratum corneum, so it's going faster, which means that the skin is thinner while you use it, mm -hmm. which makes you more prone to a burn. This does not actually cause damage to the skin or right. thin out your skin permanently. Right. The minute that you stop using a retinoid, your skin will recoup. And yeah. more importantly, there's studies demonstrating that it helps promote certain collagen production. Yes. So I think that you're fine with a retinoid. These are, again, products that have been out for a really long time, yes. prescriptions that have been studied. Long time. Yeah, this long is not time. new. Uh, second misconception with retinoids, using retinoids long-term cause cancer because you're getting too much vitamin A into the bloodstream. No, again, you are using a pea size. Tiny, it's tiny. Tiny, there's no way. Body surface area, that's just not how it works. Your head is, even if you're lathering your face and your neck within the back of your hands, it's not going to cause problems. And mm -hmm. retinol, which is in a lot of the body creams that people are mm -hmm. using for keratosis yeah. pilaris yeah. or whatever, and sometimes ask me about for stretch marks, this is of no concern. It's a very low dose. If anything, we're, I'm more worried about is it actually effective than yes. I'm worried about it doing any damage. Totally. And the third misconception with retinoid is, I get comments oh, from yeah, people every single day that say, Jillian, I tried a retinoid for a few weeks and my skin looked the same, so I stopped using it. Yes, or also people tell me, oh, I apply the retinoid to my wrinkles on my forehead. This area mm -hmm. is Botox. That mm -hmm. is what's gonna help your wrinkles. This is for, retinoids are for textural improvements yes. and long-term benefits. Unless you have oily skin and very enlarged pores, in which case, when I see those patients, I get excited because I know they're gonna see results yeah. from retinoid right away within like a month or two months. However, the rest of us, it doesn't actually make my skin look better. It sometimes makes my skin look worse yeah. because I get dry from it. But I believe in the long-term data this, showing- This is your long-term right. anti-aging product. The amount of people that comment to us say, I tried retinoid for a month, I got a bunch of pimples and I stopped, or I got very dry and flaky, so I stopped. You have to get through it, you have to stay on it. And, and believe in it. And, and believe you believe in it. it. If yeah. you don't believe in it and you don't want to have faith in yeah. it and you don't see the value, then don't do it. But if you're gonna do it, stick with it. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Claire, bye.